IK Multimedia Classic Studio Reverb. Quick overview. So first off, this video is not a demo, it's just a quick overview of what exactly is included in the Classic Studio Reverb bundle. So in the video opening, what you were hearing was Expand 2 and DigiDesign's Strike Drum Virtual Instrument. Both of these instruments were then processed through two different Classic Studio Reverb modules. Drums were processed through the Classic Plate, and my synth was processed through the Classic Hall. So now let's get right on to the quick overview. So in this video I hope to show you some of the basic operations that you can perform with the reverb modules in IK Multimedia's Classic Studio Reverb. Now since this is just a quick overview, there's no way I can show you all of the parameters and changes and possibilities that these reverb modules are capable of. The Classic Studio Reverb modules are extremely vast in different ways you can modulate and adjust the sound of your reverb, but hopefully by the end of the video you'll have a basic understanding of how these Classic Studio Reverb modules operate and you'll understand just how expansive they really are. So the Classic Studio Reverb Bundle, or CSR, as it's known for shorthand, includes four different reverb types. So we have a classic room, a classic inverse, we have a classic hall, and we have a classic plate. And all of these modules sound fantastic. So let's have an overview of the interface. So we'll start here at the classic room. First you'll notice that all of these modules have an easy and advanced options. We're going to start with the easy. So on the classic room, in easy mode, we have our basic parameters that we can change. We have a mix, diffusion, decay time, decay level, high frequency, and high damp. Moving over to our classic inverse, we have mix, diffusion, reverb time, mid slope, low slope, and build up. On our classic hall, we have a mix, a diffusion, reverb time, low time, high frequency, high damp. On our classic plate, we have a mix, diffusion, reverb time, low time, high frequency, and high damp. On all of our modules, we also have four macro sliders, and we also have A and B setups, where we can set up two distinct reverb sounds and A, B between them and choose which is best. So that's pretty easy to understand. I can set up my A, go to my B, and adjust, and then refer back to each sound. I could also make a setting on A or B, but we'll do it on A here. So I'll make a setting on A here. I'll just move all of these knobs all the way down. And then I'll transfer this setting over to B. So we'll see what B is now. Okay, go back to A and we'll click this little button right underneath. It looks almost like a playhead. Click that button, then we look at B, and now we have the same settings that we had on A. This is great because it allows you to set up a basic sound for your reverb, say right when you open up the program. And then when you go to B, maybe you don't want to have to make those changes and try to A, B back and forth to match your settings. So we can set up our A first, transfer that to B, and then we go to B and start manipulating just slightly maybe extremely, on the parameters, and then A being back and forth between the sounds. Very cool option. So now, let's look at what really makes these reverbs so great by going into the Advanced section. So I'll just click the Advanced tab on all of our modules here. And we'll start up here with Room. We have an I.O. button. We can adjust several parameters in the I.O. section. In level, out level, mix, in image and out image. Definitely play around with this out image. Really cool. In image you can do things like change the input to mono, keep it stereo, sort of play with the phase of the audio. It's really cool stuff. On the out image you can do the same thing. Mono, stereo. You can even do like surround effects. So on our classic room we have a time button here. All kind of great options to choose from. Reverb section. Color section. So we have low cut F, that's low cut frequency. And then low cut G, that's low cut gain. Same for the high cut. High cut F, that's frequency. High cut G, that's gain. All right? And then reflections. Adjust the left and the right. And then the level mix. So now we'll move on to the inverse. Again, we have the IO, time, mid slope, low slope, crossover, things like that. And the reverb section, build up. Really great parameter to mess around with. Color and reflections. Down here at classic hall, again, we have the IO section, time section, reverb section, color section and reflect section. In classic plate, again, we have the I.O., time section, reverb section, color section, reflect section, and the echo section. And if you think that's a lot of different parameters you have access to, I haven't even gotten started yet. So now we'll focus on just the classic hall reverb. But what I'm talking about will apply in principle to all of the other modules as well. So on all of our modules, we have a mod and a macro button. So we'll click this mod button, and you'll see now we have a matrix of eight different slots. And we also have two LFOs, LFO1, LFO2, and two envelopes. Just click on the buttons and you can adjust the parameters. You see on our LFO, we have 
sine waves, triangle, saw waves, square, noise. Same for our LFO2. Then our envelope filter, we have gain, input, attack, release. So I could choose, say, a triangle on my LFO1, come over to my matrix, and assign a source. I'll just click right on where it says none, because there's, none, there's no source assigned. Click that, and then we can assign our modulation source. The LFOs are the envelopes. So I'll just choose LFO1 for now. Then we can choose a destination. Look at all of these different options we have. So I'll just choose by random, we'll just say reverb build up. We can choose a minimum and a maximum just by clicking and then moving our mouse up or down. Very easy. Same for the maximum. We can also choose a curve, linear, logarithmic, or exponential. By using this modulation section, you can create really cool spatial effects. And we have eight different slots we can choose from. And again, I can choose LFO1 again here if I want choose something different or I could even choose reverb build up again so tons of options in this modulation section so now moving on to the macros so in this macro section you'll notice we have again eight different slots these eight slots we can again assign a source just like we did in our modulation section and our sources correspond to our macro sliders over here so in this macro section you could do things like create sweeps change between two different styles of reverb with this slider. Really cool stuff. So again, we'll just go to source, choose a macro, choose a destination, and all kinds of different destinations we can choose from. Choose our minimum and maximum very easily, and again, choose our curve. Not only that, but we could also name our sliders so we know exactly what's going on. So we'll just click macro name here. So to name a macro, you'll just click on this label name and type in whatever name you want. So I already have macro one named as size. You can see that reflected on the interface here. Very cool. So that about wraps up this video, but I'll just mention a couple more things we can do. Not only could we say move these sliders manually by clicking and dragging, we can also automate not only the sliders, but several different parameters in the classic Studio Reverb bundle. So we'll go to the automation list, and I'm in Pro Tools here. You'll see I've already added Mix and Macro 4 to my automation list. Click OK. Now looking over here in this track, I'll just bring up my macro 4 automation lane. So in this automation lane we are automating macro number 4 and in this automation lane we're automating the mix knob. So I'll just draw in some more automation here on macro 4. There we go. Go to the main interface here. Now I'll click my play button and you'll watch the mix knob animate and slider 4 here, macro number 4. You can see those automating right there. Very cool. If we go back to our automation list, you can see all of the different parameters that we could automate. Very great stuff. Of course, we also have a preset area. Just click on this preset area here. We have defaults. There's the hall. Go to insert. So if you're using this reverb on an insert that's directly on an audio track, then you would choose an insert preset. Again, not necessarily. There are no rules in mixing, but they're set up a little differently. So we'll just choose medium snare hall. There's our preset. And if we look down to the send preset and we'll go to medium snare hall. We'll see it's pretty much the same but the mix knob is all the way up to 100%. That's because if you're using a send you'll usually want your mix all the way up and then you'll adjust with the actual level slider on your channel to dial in how much reverb you want. But that's getting into mixing and that's not the focus of this video. So I believe that wraps up this video on IK Multimedia's Classic Studio Reverb Bundle. This is definitely a great plugin to have at your disposal. These reverbs sound amazing and as you've learned in this video, they are loaded with options. So if you are interested in the Classic Studio Reverb Bundle, definitely check out IKMultimedia.com.